Haley Miller, and I'm Shelby Graham, and today we're going to be talking about assisted reproductive technologies, otherwise known as ART. To give a bit of an outline of what we'll be talking about today, I'll give a brief background and history of ART, and then we'll explain some different types of ART, and then along with that, we'll talk about the benefits and risks to using these technologies. So before we get started, we're going to ask the audience how many of you are actually familiar with ART. See, it uh, can be familiar to some people, but not everyone knows what exactly is entailed in these procedures and methods, so we're going to explain this to you today. Assisted reproductive technologies are technologies and procedures that help people who have trouble achieving a natural pregnancy. So the beginning of ART began in 1890, where the first known attempt of an embryo transfer was performed, and then they began research and exploring IVF, which is in vitro fertilization, as we'll explain later on, in rabbits in the 1930s. And in 1973, the first human IVF was performed, although this was unsuccessful, but it led to the first three babies being conceived by IVF in 1978. And this information is from Angelica in 2015. So to start off with a few types of ART, um, some common ones are IVF, surrogacy, and elective single embryo transfer, or ESET. So with IVF, um, an egg and a sperm are combined in a petri dish, and this forms an embryo. And that embryo is then transferred um, or implanted into the lining of the uterus. Uh, surrogacy is a little different than IVF because it happens in a surrogate mother rather than the biological mother. Um, the surrogate mother carries the baby to full term, and then the baby is given to the biological parents after childbirth. Um, the baby will have all the biological or all the genetic material of the intended mother and father. Um, ESET is very similar to IVF, but instead of um, multiple embryos that can be transferred, one specific embryo is transferred into the uter uterus, and this is chosen based off the viability of the embryo and the chance of a successful pregnancy. This information is from CDC in 2019. I'll just explain some more types of ART. The first one is PGT, or pre-implantation genetic um, testing. And this is to ensure that um, an embryo is chosen uh, without certain genetic defects um, before implantation. So it ensures that a healthy embryo is being implanted into the um, woman free of disorders. And a second one is ICSI, or intracytoplasmic sperm injection. This is where the sperm is injected straight into the egg, and it can be combined with the process of IVF. Um, and it's used when the there's a fertility issue due to the sperm, um, whether the sperm cannot um, enter the egg or cannot swim um, its way through. And then the third one is gamete interfallopium transfer, or GIFT. Um, and this is when an egg is surgically removed from the female and the semen is obtained from the male. And the egg and sperm are combined or placed into the fallopian tube where they are careful that they are not combined until after they have been into the fallopian tubes. Um, so they are fertilized naturally within the woman. The purpose of ART is to achieve a healthy embryo um, that's free of any disorders and ultimately leading to a successful full-term pregnancy and a healthy baby. So there are two main advantages to using ART in humans, and the first one is to overcome infertility issues, and the second one is to prevent from passing down hereditary diseases. Infertility is actually defined as an illness by CDC in 2019 as the difficulty of bearing a child for after trying for one or more years. And this can be due to the hindrance of the one of the four main steps of fertilization. The first step is the ovary has to release an egg, and then the sperm must successfully join the egg, and then the fertilized egg will travel through the fallopian tube, and then finally the fertilized egg attaches to the uterus wall. These are the main four steps um, of fertilization, and any hindrance of these steps can cause infertility issues. There are the main female factors that can be due to the ovaries, fallopian tubes, the uterus, and the egg. So there could be a diminished ovarian reserve, or the fallopian tubes could have a blockage, and ART can be used to surpass these um, issues due to the female factors. The male factors are the concentration, the motility, and the shape of the sperm. Um, so by, by passing through these um, male factors of infertility, ART can help um, cause a successful pregnancy. And then, according to uh, Chandra in 2013, infertility affects 
um, nearly 11% of all women aged 15 to 44 years in the U.S., as well as 12% of all men aged 25 to 44 years in the U.S. And this is a, a great large, about 10% of all people have these infertility issues and are unable to successfully have uh, pregnancy come to term. This is a graph from CDC in 2016, and it shows all the different types of infertility factors. And as you see, the two main leading factors are the male factor and the sperm motility, concentration, and the shape. And then the second one is the diminished ovarian reserve, which correlates to the age of the woman. And then the second reason for using ART in humans is to avoid hereditary diseases. This can be used from PGT, as I explained earlier, which is the um, pre-implantation genetic testing, which can detect the genetic defects according to APA in 2019. And then these can avoid these sex-linked disorders from listed in SART in 2019 as cystic fibrosis, sickle cell anemia, Duquesne, and Duquesne muscular dystrophy. And these are very serious illnesses that can be life-threatening, that can be avoided by using ART. And then along with PGT, other um, genetic screening can help determine that a healthy embryo is being implanted in the woman to be able to achieve a successful, successful pregnancy. And then two main oppositions to using ART in humans is because of their health risk to the mother and the baby, baby or there are religion limits. So the main health risk, as we'll be explaining later, is due to multiple births of the, um, as multiple embryos are implanted into the woman. Um, by surpassing this, you can either implant less embryos or use the type of ART of ESET where only a single embryo is transferred that is tested and made sure that will be the most viable and most successful in the pregnancy. And then also doctors are required to explain the procedures and risks to the mother so the mother is able to determine that the advantages of using infertility outweighs the potential um, risks associated with it. And then there's also the religion li limit that some religions believe that um, it's not allowed to interfere with conception, so it's not acceptable for a scientist or doctor to be able to interfere with a natural conception. And this can be avoided by using the process of GIFT, where the uh, sperm and the egg are entered into the fallopian tube separately, so the fertilization actually occurs naturally as the egg and sperm are joined in, inside the woman, as well as the um, fertilized egg implants into the uterus uh, lining um, on its own. And then success of ART is able to grant miracles and wishes of families who want to start um, having their own children who can't do it naturally. And there have been over 263,000 cycles of ART performed in 2016. And then 143,000 of those resulted in live births. And then 100 or 1.7% of all children born today were conceived by um, the use of ART. And 1.7% seems like a small percentage, but in the grand scheme of the billion, peoples in, uh, bil billion people in the world, um, that is a quite a bit of people. And this is from CDC in 2019. And then throughout the years, ART has grown and will continue to grow. And there have been, um, the successful ART cycles have tripled since 1995, according to Sundaram in 2018. And then 5 million babies were born by ART, ART since the beginning of it within the past 35 years, according to ASRM in 2019. And then research of these ART will continue to improve the effectiveness and as well as decrease the health risk as research is done and more is learned about these technologies and processes. So now that Shelby's talked about all the benefits and what reasons why ART is a good thing for human beings, um, I'm going to discuss some of the oppositions and disadvantages of ART in humans. So it can be very dangerous um, to the health of the mother and the child. Um, it can also have a lot of financial considerations because ART procedures are often very expensive. And there can be ethical and moral concerns um, when using ART. According to Morgan in 2017, uh, there can be health risks for the mother when using assisted reproductive technologies. Um, some of these conditions can be, some of these conditions are hypertensive disorders, diabetes, and placental abnormalities, as well as multiple embryo transfers. So hypertensive disorders are basically high blood, uh, high blood pressure, and this can lead to a lot of health problems such as stroke and even heart attacks, which is very dangerous for the mother. 
gestational diabetes is up to more than 30% more likely um, for a woman who is using ART than in a mother who may have a natural pregnancy. Diabetes is a condition that causes the blood sugar to fluctuate and is often negative towards a woman's health. And gestational is a term that refers to the time between conception and birth, so basically just the time of the pregnancy. Placental abnormalities that can occur are, um, the most common is placenta previa, and this is when the placenta covers the cervix and separates from the wall of the uterus, and this can be damaging to a woman's reproductive system. And multiple embryo transfers is another risky thing that can happen when using ART, and this will be discussed a little bit further in a few slides. So as well as risks to the mother, there are risks to the child. Um, some of these are that there's more of a chance for a C-section when ART is used, um, and the baby can be born prematurely, which results in a low birth weight. Um, premature babies with low birth weights um, need a lot more attention in their first few months of life. They need, might need to stay in the hospital. They um, need to be monitored and will most likely stay in the NICU. And this is not an ideal situation for um, starting a family and having a baby, but it can be very common. Um, an article from the Journal of Reproductive Immunology states that multiple embryo transfers, like I said before, can increase the chance of multiple births. This can be due to the reason that there is multiple embryos transferred into the uterus, and this results in more than one pregnancy at a time. So the chance of having twins, triplets, um, even quadruplets, and so on, is much more likely when ART is used. Having more than one baby at a time is um, pretty strenuous on a mother's body and um, can lead to complications during the pregnancy and during childbirth as well. This figure from the CDC shows the relationship between embryo transfer and the number of infants that are born. So as the number of embryo transfers goes up, the chance of multiple gestations or multiple pregnancies um, becomes a lot more prevalent. And the percent of live births is also shown on this graph. But as you can see, as more and more embryos are transferred, um, you have a higher chance of having twins uh, or triplets, etc. Along with the health risks of um, using ART, there's also a lot of emotional stressors that can come to a mother and um, a father. Uh, so a couple can be very stressed and worried through the process of ART due to waiting on test results for fertility, wondering, did the treatment work? Um, am I going to become pregnant? And women can develop symptoms of depression during their use of ART as well. Another stress that can be added is a financial stress stressor, um, and I will discuss this in the next slide. All types of ART are very expensive. Um, for example, only one cycle of IVF in vitro fertilization can cost up to $13,000, and that's only one cycle. Typically, to achieve a successful pregnancy, there needs to be more than one cycle of IVF. And uh, $13,000 charged multiple times can accumulate very quickly, and this can cause a lot of stress on a family, especially if insurance starts to become a problem. So the last um, issue over ART I will discuss is that it can be morally and ethically controversial. Um, so a big question is, where do the extra embryos go after ART um, has been done? And the answer is that they can be donated, they can be put towards research, or they can be thawed and just discarded. So the most ethical um, approach to this is typically donations. Uh, people can anonymously donate the embryos, or they can um, put, the, or put the embryos towards a designated family that they want them to go to. Research and thawing and discarding of the embryos is often unethical or it can be controversial either way, um, depending on if you believe life begins at a certain point, at conception or during a certain trimester. Um, these viewpoints can kind of go either way. So just to conclude, I would like to iterate, reiterate um, the benefits of using ART as they can help 
um, infertility in couples who want to have grow a family and want to have a child of their own but are unable to do so naturally. And then it also avoids passing on dangerous heritable diseases onto their children that they are concerned about for themselves and they're concerned to pass them on to their children. And then ART will continue to improve and become more effective as research and um, these procedures are done more often as they will um, become more popular and successful um, as time goes on. And contrary to all the benefits of ART, it can be dangerous, it can be very, very expensive, and it might not be moral or ethical in um, certain viewpoints. So now that you have both sides of the argument, we'll let you decide whether or not you think ART should be used in the